Hello everyone, FunshineX here. Welcome back to Crash Landing, a map pack on the Feed the Beast launcher available in the third party mod pack sections created by Iskandar. We're in version 1.1.2. Today we're going to work in the factory of our city base and it's undergone a little bit of a transformation. Well, bam! I got a second level on there. <laughs> so and it's actually got a basement too, so it's got three levels. Um, add so much extra iron, right? Not just let's just use some of these factory blocks to give it a little bit different. I still don't like these stones, but uh, I like the factory blocks. So we'll think of something else to put in the little thing. Put some windows up on the top so I can see out over in my base into the city and everything. Let's go inside. I'll show you the changes. First major change you're gonna see is I created a lot of barrels, all these barrels, and everything's connected by Steve's factory manager cable. Yay! Uh, so I can move these around and put them into barrels or get them out whenever I need to, which is cool. And, uh, yeah, that's the first change. I still got a chest here of kind of random stuff that I need to find a spot for to see if it's appropriate here. Because, like, things like salt, right, they should be over in the kitchen. Bone meal should be over in the garden. Uh, and some of these other things I just don't have enough to warrant a barrel. So I might just leave this chest here for odds and ends if it doesn't fit into a barrel. Uh, over here, um, I moved the output chest from sieving right here, and I actually need to fix that on my program, so let me go do that right now. It should be sort the rest, inventories, should be the only iron chest connected to the system, so yeah, there we go. Okay, so that will get everything in here, and I need to black or whitelist only, or I don't know, blacklist maybe, things that aren't uh, materials or whatever because I want to do what I want to do here is put on all my dusts like this and I want to use an auto packager uh, to package them up into blocks and put another chest here and then I can take the output of that upstairs to smelt it so let's start with that so I'm gonna need a bit of iron uh, let's just take a stack <laughs> bit of redstone let's see three pistons will be fine up here I need some cobble and some wood we should be good to go so I know that we need one of these and we need some pistons and we need oh gold I forgot a piece of gold that was a whole stack of gold oh well <laughs> that's fine that's fine and now can we put it all together yes auto packager put it right on there and he uses RF hmm forgot about that okay well that's nice <laughs> let's go get our battery just to power him up and make sure he's working like we think he will oh, I didn't move this to an elevator yet still an old-fashioned ladder and <laughs> I still got my bed down here <laughs> I haven't been down to the basement in a while all right give me this please this should still work because they're all, you know, got cables connected here. It just doesn't have a nice little battery to store all the charge. It's fine. I really haven't planted my jungle trees in a while anyway, so it's not being using power. Okay, so let's get this little guy here and put him right there. And you want to do output down. All right, he should start packaging. Now we just need a chest. Uh, sure. Where's my dolly? Oh, it doesn't matter, there's nothing in there. And bam. Darn it. <laughs> um, do you need to be facing a certain way? I bet he does. Can I turn you? There we go. Nope, not that way. Can't really see. I bet the little orange... Let's try that way. Huh. Why you no work? You have all the power you need. We got chests. Okay guys, this was a pretty silly mistake, but uh, apparently this thing only works from left to right, <laughs> which is kind of stupid, but uh, I'll make it work that way. It should be configurable. I mean, everything else in this game is configurable. But that's fine. I'll just put that there. You crafting now? There he goes. All right. Um, so now we just need to go back to here in the sieving and put you back to your iron chest. There we go. Okay, the next thing you'll see in here is I've got a whole new program called Seared Gen, and that is generating me cobble or seared cobblestone. 
Uh, I have an input here. Let's see what it does. It goes to a barrel. Hmm, I wonder what's going to a barrel for. It's getting cobble. Awesome. Where is it putting that cobble? Into a casting basin. The next thing it's doing is it's going to go ahead and go to a casting basin and pull out seared cobblestone. Okay, cool. Uh, there's also this emitter that's set to do what? Uh, strength 15 pulse every 10 ticks. So every half a second it'll pulse. And then we've, or every second, because it triggers for a second, it'll pulse for half a second. There we go. And then we've got another thing here that's going to a chest pulling out seared cobblestone. And where's it putting it? Into a smeltery controller. Hmm, interesting. And then I've got well, that last one here that's looking at a condition to see if a chest has, oops, uh, nine seared cobblestone at least and if it does it goes and gets something off a casting table and it happens to be a seared brick and it puts it in to a barrel that's the program let's go see what happens and you guys will understand what's going on uh, this is called magic <laughs> look at this thing this is awesome Okay, so remember what was happening. We were taking cobble from the barrel, which is right up there, and we were putting it inside uh, the casting basin all the time. So there's always going to be cobble in here, right? You'll see it for a second, just a tiny second, uh, but you can't even tell. It puts it in there so fast. Then we saw that we were emitting a redstone signal every second for half a second, so we see it's just kind of making a pulse. That's a nice little square wave pulse. Cool. And here you can see that we're putting in that smeared cobblestone and generating seared, liquid seared stone and pouring it into an ingot cast. And then that is going into this barrel. 24 stacks! <laughs> this has only been running for maybe an hour. <laughs> I'm getting my lava from that magma crucible, by the way. We've seen that before, so I'm not going to really explain that. But the principle here is this. One of these seared cobblestone... If we uh, do a use on it, can we do a use? There we go. Can be melted for 144 millibuckets of liquid seared stone. You can then use this to create, uh, if you pour it over cobble, a seared cobblestone. So you just go right back to the thing. But the thing is, it only takes 72, exactly half. So as long as you can give this thing an infinite supply of cobblestone and an infinite supply of lava, which are cake because we have this and that, which are both infinite, right? Uh, this thing will run forever and duplicate your seared stone over and over and over and over. And what I've done is whenever there's an excess amount of this seared cobblestone, at least nine, right? That was I was checking that condition to see if there was nine. Then start pouring the rest into this casting table and then pull it out and pour it in here. And oh, look, I've got like <laughs> infinite seared brick. <laughs> oh, this is this is this machine makes me so happy because it's nice and compact. It looks like a little like robot. I don't know. He's got little eyes and little mouth. He's like, feed me seared cobble and I will make you more seared cobble. <laughs> uh, but anyway guys that is the seared cobble duplicator build using steve's factory manager and your smeltery uh you no longer have to go anywhere near a city uh to get your seared bricks this can be done pretty early on i mean as soon as you have a smeltery up and running and you've got some cobble then you can start duplicating it so you just need to go to the city once to get your basic smeltery and then you just start duplicating it uh there's another way where you can put the um cobble into a uh, high oven and get seared that way but it takes so long this is so quick do it this way <laughs> please make me happy um okay are you done packaging everything oh look at he's packaged it all that is so nice of you okay so one thing i do need to do is i need to hammer stuff that's not dust because my high oven triples or as long as it's in dust form. It only will double it if it's in sand or gravel form. So I need to use my hammers to hammer this down and then repackage it back into dust form. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put that right here. I'm gonna put some autonomous activators here and I'll have probably just two actually, one there, one there. And I'll have an autonomous activator here that's actually dropping the gravel 
and then this one will drop the sand uh, that will be hammered by the autonomous activators here, and this guy will suck it back up and put it right in here where it will be repackaged. You do not belong in there, slag. You can go in here. Okay. So that is going to be for another day, though, because I don't even have power to run this stuff um, yet. Uh, this is just going to run out of power soon anyway. Are you really using power to do nothing? Okay. You better not. You. <laughs> what? It's 32,000 uh, switches. You see that? It's like 171, 177, 171. Okay, anyway, I don't care. <sighs> okay, let's go upstairs. I've got an elevator here. Ooh, need to eat some salad. Oh, I want to show you one thing before we go upstairs. I've got a spider wall. This spider wall is really easy. It serves two purposes. This is made out of panels. I could have made it out of covers, but uh, it's very difficult to stick a cover on a cover. And <laughs> Panels were just easier, more target area. I could even slabs or full blocks. Uh, but spiders can't climb that. You'll see they'll climb the wall and they'll get stuck under that panel. Uh, the other purpose it serves, I believe, I haven't tested this yet, but I think it blocks light. So any mob that's just like hanging out there, like that skeleton or something, well he has a helmet so that doesn't work, but that skeleton there, when it becomes daytime and he's like, ah, I'm burning, where do we go? He's going to run in here and jump on my conveyor belt and be conveyored to his death. I think. I'm hoping that works. I might have to put full blocks here to make that happen, but you know, I don't really, I don't want them to burn out here. I want them to be transported to my killing area. So, that's pretty cool. And can that giant zombie, yeah, okay, make sure he can fit under that. He can. That's cool. Okay, so we're time to go upstairs and see what's going on up there. You notice this inventory cable goes from the basement all the way up to the next floor. And that will allow us to move our items out of that chest and move our lava that's downstairs and make this room. Uh... What I'm going to have here, this will be my uh, second smeltery dedicated to specifically to alloys. So we'll be making our alloys here. This will be my high oven. It's going to be very tall, so it'll poke out through the roof and make it look like a factory. And these are going to be all casting basins to make blocks of my ore. Sound good? That's the layout of the room. Okay, so I brought everything here. And obviously we've got a controller. Uh, we've got a tank and we've got a brick and we've only got 23 seared stone what are we gonna do i don't know go downstairs where we have 23 stacks of it yeah let's do that <laughs> uh, this just reminds me of like uh the melker in uh golden exchange 3 that or in golden exchange 2 that sky and i came up with that got really popular um that it just you know generated something out of nothing it was completely you know, took a little bit and then generated a ton. So I started, it, honestly, I put one brick of this in there. <laughs> and now it's made 22 stacks of this stuff. Uh, let me get two stacks just in case. Okay. And I can, I can actually make a ton of scorched stuff as well if I just took out this um, casting plate, whatever the gold thing is, and put bricks in there, like either with a hopper with a Steve's Factory Manager, and then just poured it on the bricks. Then I would get the little brown bricks for my high oven. And I'll probably do that to make that thing super tall. Uh, as far as a deep tank, I was going to make one, but then I looked at them and I'm like, these things are kind of worthless. <laughs> you know, because as long as you move the liquid out quickly, then there's no point in having a deep tank. Deep tank is like storing liquid. And I don't want to store the liquid. Why not? St let's just store it in block form. Um, and also, Steve's factory manager cannot pull liquid out of a... Uh, a high oven or a deep tank as far as I can tell. If someone can get that to work, uh, let me know. I've challenged Land Strider to see if he can do it, uh, but I spent a little over an hour trying to mess around with it and couldn't figure it out. So let's make the smeltery. I need a lot of bricks. Oh, I think I got a ton. I don't need another ah, freaking black book. Okay. Where are all the bricks I guess made? Are they invisible? Okay, they were there. Weird. Uh, I guess I'm going to lose that light up here. It's probably going to get a little bit darker. Yes, it is. I'm going to have to remember to put a couple nooks. Um, people are asking what kind of light source I've been using. Uh, this is just glowstone chiseled. And then if you take that chiseled glowstone, use a uh, knife, or I mean a hacksaw, then you can turn it into these little nooks. 
you just keep cutting it down and cutting it down. You get about 32 of them per one block of glowstone. So that's awesome. They're small. They don't give off heat. They're pretty cool. All right, so let's do that. And I know I don't need a brick there, but I'm going to put one there anyway so that I don't fall down. And I've got infinite amount of this, right? <laughs> okay, so I think I want some tank uh, here because we'll put the lava in there. Oh, you've already got lava. Cool. How about the controller here? And let's do a drain. I need a casting thing. Do I have any wood here? Yeah. Uh, put it here. A uh, drain. Is it like this? Yes. And I think the tables and everything are downstairs. Or did I put them in this chest? Oh, there it is. Table right there. And I'll have to grab my ingot cast, which I do know is downstairs, and put it there. And I think I also have another the little thing that pours out. I don't know. Whatever it's called. Uh, but anyway, that should be our smeltery working. And what do you think? Should we make it taller? Yeah, let's make it taller. Now we can make lots of invar <laughs> really fast. Oh no, I'm out. Oops, I got more. Ah, I'm out of water. This must be hot. I think some of these machines are very hot, actually. Oh, funny thing, uh, making all those peanut butter sandwiches, when you use grape jelly, <laughs> it gives you back an empty bottle. So I, owe, I have a lot of glass bottles lying around just randomly from making grape jelly. Pretty funny. All right. Uh, we didn't go too far. I really want Landstrider's auto-filling system, but I need a lot higher uh, technology on Pneumaticraft for that. Oops. Not you. All right, so perfect. Um, we're gonna need a light source in there. Let's remove that guy for now because I don't want a mob spawning in there. Actually, if you let mobs spawn in there, you get blood. <laughs> oh no, I'm short. How could that happen? There we have more. Okay. Our smeltery is complete. Look at all those stacks. I'm wondering if I should just finish off this little area so I don't get mobs in there. Yeah, I mean, it's like, not like uh, I need this <laughs> brick stuff. And I think it looks better like that. Awesome! Big old smeltery. And now I can... Uh, is there a... human? Yeah, okay. So that cable will let me manage um, this casting basin, whatever it is in it, so I can pull it out. I can put items in via this one, and I can put lava in via this one. So that should give me access to everything from Steve's Factory Manager. Okay, now we made our high oven over here. Okay. Oh, um, I don't know if you, I showed you. I put uh, auto repair on my pickaxe, and I leveled it up a few times. But anyway... Okay, so we need our duct, we need our drain. I have a deep kick controller just because we had to make one for a quest, I think, if I recall. Casting basin, okay. First level, nine bricks. Second level is going to be... Does the duct have to go in the middle? I think it does. So this is the one I'm going to put items in from Steve's Factory Manager. I think if I want to go in, I need to do this way. Yeah. So I'm actually going to run... Yeah, it's going to be right here. 
put items in there because I'll have factory manager cable actually replace these and I'll put them right to there to put things in and then I'll have a let's see the drain I want to see if I can put a drain in the coil let's try it I don't know if that works it might Did I used to have more of these? Where are the rest? Oh, yeah. Cracked stuff. I don't want to use cracked stuff. It's ugly. I think I might be able to melt it down. But that's alright. We've got enough. Uh, all but one. Turn it. No! Not in the window! <laughs> it just fell on the ground. Let's go out and get it. Grab some peanut butter and jelly while we're there. Uh, can we eat these? Eat these once. So I can eat four more. Okay. Oh, did that fall out? No, I think it should be here. Yeah. How did that happen? Brick jumped from a two-story building and lived. Uh, I need to get uh, this. And I guess I don't have another one of those at all. Thanks. Huh. Thought I did. That's all right. I can make one. Probably somewhere I have one, because I know I've been using multiples, but there we go. And actually, I'll probably replace that with an item duct. Or, I mean, a, a flu duct. Oh, well, that's good. Um, so we're going to need one of these little Pratt guys for now. We'll make more later. Actually, should we just make another whole level? Yeah, we should. Might as well. So give me nine of these guys. What a jump. Look at that jump placement. And I want that to go up through the roof, so we'll do that at some point. Alright, uh, we forgot our controller. Okay, and controller. Did I bring my button? Ah, oh, no, where's my button? There's my button. <laughs> okay, so should we give this a test run? I think we shall. So in here we should have plenty of something to burn. Let's burn our iron. Gonna need some charcoal. I got plenty of charcoal over in the other area. There, iron ore, and go. All right, seems to like it. It's heating up. Okay. Then, uh, fluid act time, which I think is out here. One of these, maybe you. There you go. Oh, I don't have very much. I'll have to go make more. And how many servos? Oh, I'm low on servos as well. But that's okay because we can make more now. Because if we look at the recipe for servos, it is glass, sear bricks, and redstone. We don't have glass, do we? Ah, I only got like none. All right. Well, this will be enough. Uh, need a piece of redstone. Okay, and more fluid is copper lead. Lead way over here, there we go. Uh, I know I grabbed more lead than that. Where'd you go, lead? Hmm, interesting. I heard it make the little noise. <laughs> How do I make these see-through? To make them see through takes uh, hardened glass fuse quartz. Okay, we'll do that at some point because I like to see what's flowing in them. Um, but all I have to do is take this and run it out here. And you need to move, my friend. 
looks good. And, uh, yeah, so now we start making some basins. And we're going to need one for every type of ore. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need eight basins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Perfect amount of space. Okay, so now I'm going to apply a servo here, and this is something I knew, knew that I learned. If I take a servo, and I uh, come in here, and I whitelist an item, uh, uh, whitelist a, a liquid, it will allow any liquid in, but will only allow the whitelisted liquid out. Also, a pipe can only have a single type of liquid in it at a time. So if I have iron and copper burning, and the iron comes out and fills this pipe up, it's not going to go into the other seared, uh, the other basins, because I'm going to uh, servo them all and say, well, iron, you're only allowed in this one. So it's just going to come and hang out in the pipe, and as soon as the iron has room, it'll go in here and make me iron blocks. And then the, uh, the next liquid will come down, and it'll go, once this pipe is empty, and it'll go, oh, I can't go in there, because that's for iron, so I'll come here, that's for tin or gold or whatever. So I think that's a cool little system where I don't have to come in here and say w which one I want to drain and all that kind of stuff or worry if I have an exact multiple of nine, all that kind of stuff. I can just burn it all. Uh, once we have a super high one, we can burn all of our ores at once and uh, it won't matter. So all I really need to do is get a bucket of each type of metal. Uh, and to do that, we're going to go get our... Open blocks tanks. That one's got water in them. How many empty ones? There we go. Got plenty. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and let. Uh, because this one is now whitelisted to nothing, nothing should ever go down in there for now. So let's put the tank here and turn this to output. And I need a lever. I'll replace this maybe with Steve Factory Manager redstone emitter or something. Just so it's cool. And go ahead and bring me out some iron. Huh. Interesting. You lie to me. That should not allow anything out, but I guess it did. So let's keep going until we have at least a thousand in there. Perfect. And now I need a bucket of it. Actually, I'll probably just use a glass bottle of it. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Why would I think that would work? Can't store iron in a glass bottle. Alright, so scoop you up. Now I can empty fist this guy and say only iron can come out of there. Cool. Well, I'll use Seize Factory Manager to grab these blocks for me and put them in a chest. And I just thought of something. I'm storing them all in ingot form down here. So block form is not going to be bueno. Which is okay. It's okay. I'm just going to need a lot more uh, of these. <laughs> so should we mix up some aluminum brass? I think I have some aluminum brass. Let's look. Yeah, I do. And I will take a brick just for now, and I'll go ahead and cook you up in here. Put a brick there, and let those melt. Okay, and this guy, now I need you to drain back out, so I can put you right there. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, I should be able to, yeah. There it goes. It's in the pipe. <laughs> okay, so that one is the one that is whitelisted. Oh, since it doesn't have an output, you can't even get to the servo. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's make some more tables. I've got one there. I need seven more. Oops. Okay. I 
Should be okay, because you can't pour anything there. And as soon as this is melted, which it is... Uh, isn't that the right way to make an ingot cast? Can I not use this guy? Let's use an uh, actual... I think I'm derping. Nope, it just, you can't, okay, can't use Scorch Break. How many of these am I going to get? Oh, only four? Alright, well, I'll make some more off-camera, because we're getting really long. Uh, I need to leave one in there. And now this should make me iron ingots. Cool. And I don't want to put the rest of them in there until I have the right fluid. So let's uh, put the tank here. No, don't take iron in there. You s <sighs> it's difficult to set up, but once I've got everything configured, it's going to be nice. Go back out of there. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the uh, flux. Okay, so we need some more inventory cable to finish this guy off. I'll do the same thing where I'll show you all the whole setup or as much as I can, and then we will. Um, I'll program the factory manager thing F or in between, and then show you guys next time. So I think I'm gonna go. I know I want to go this way. So I can get items in there like that. I need to make more cable. I think that needs glass. Yeah, lots of glass, lots of iron. Okay, so that's gonna be on hold for just a little while. I don't want to bore you guys making glass, but yeah, you can see how it's gonna work. We're gonna have the factory manager pulling out all of the ingots and putting downstairs into the barrels. Uh, putting the actual uh, dust into our high oven, which will get taller and taller as we go. I might as well put some more things in here. So uh, let's go with another... Oh, they're over here. Let's use our tin and gold. We don't have to worry about them alloying, which is my favorite part of the high oven, besides the tripling. And that tin cooks so quickly. Okay, so now we've got still got iron in here we've got to get rid of. You know what you can do? I think if you turn this back this way, oops, it'll go back in. Yeah, see the iron is going back in, <laughs> which is cool. So now uh, once this all this iron has gone back in, What are you now? You're still iron? Okay, there shouldn't be anything in there now. So I can say, let's do the tin, output the tin here. And that's gonna fill that up, so now I can get a bucket of, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this bucket of molten iron? You want a, you want a bucket of molten iron? Oh, now the iron. <laughs> going in here. Oh, this is a mess. I need another open block tank. Oops, not in there. It's in here. Ah, uh, there they are. Forgot to get rid of this stupid thing after I programmed the servo. So let's put uh, iron in there. There we go. Take the tin out, we will apply a servo here, say whitelist for tin, and if this works, this should not make iron. Alright, it worked. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, iron, I want you to go back in there. Get rid of all this iron, and tin... Once that's all there, 
All right, the pipes are empty, so let's go ahead and disconnect that. Oh no, let's go put some iron in there. Dang it. Maybe not. Uh, you can output. And that should make tin here. Oh, no, what are you doing? It's pouring gold. Oh, crap. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just wasted a bunch of gold. Awesome. How did the gold ever get out of there? Put the tin on the bottom. Alright, this is empty now. Put the tin back in there. So you see that iron will not go in the system while the tin is in there. But as soon as the tin is done, which could take a while because there's probably a ton of it in there. Nope, it might be done actually. That's why I want see-through pipes. <laughs> this is one of those things where it has a plan, but I wanted to show you guys me creating it. It's quite difficult to set up. There's a lot of trial and error back and forth fixing stuff, but... Once it's done, it'll be good. And that's what we'll show you guys next time. So, I think I'm going to end it here, guys. This has been Funchon X4 to Crash Landing. Uh, if you liked the episode, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. And don't forget to check out everybody else on the server. Um, Landstrider said he was going to come over and pay us a visit. I don't know if that means he's going to just come by or prank us or do what. We'll see. <laughs> I'm keeping a watch out. Um, I know he's got an army of drones that can tear down a city building pretty quickly, so... Uh, we might have to come up with some defenses to see if he becomes hostile. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, go check out their channels, see what they're up to, let me know. Uh, this has been Funshine X, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.